Good morning, good morning. Happy hump day, you guys. Um, so my topic today is um, fear, and I find myself returning to this topic uh, multiple, multiple times in most things that I do in my business when I'm working with people, when I'm teaching my students, when I'm talking about how to overcome challenges and obstacles, it always seems to return to um, the topic of fear. And um, please say good morning if you pop in. I'd love to see who's here. Say hello, give me a thumbs up and something. Just say that you're here. Um, but I want to touch on this topic because the last few calls that I've had of exploration of with um, people that I'm working with one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we've been talking about action steps. Like action steps are the things that I like to ask people to do before we meet again. So it might be something like this. Um, okay, so an action step for you today would be to take 10 minutes to yourself or maybe an action step um, would be to um, write that blog post that you've always, you know, felt that you wanted to, to share with the world. Um, maybe it is to dig deeper into yourself about certain things, whatever it may be. It's different for every person that I work with. I've got a hair tickling my eye, excuse me, <laughs> driving me nuts. Um, but so, so this is what I've uncovered and I'm going to give you guys an, a way to kind of explore and dig into your own, um, origin of fear, right? Cause it's never really for the reason that we think it is. Hi Shelly. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and, and this is, you know, again, the theme is fear what I'm seeing and witnessing and experiencing and helping my people investigate in groups and all of that is where is it coming from, right? So yesterday, good morning, Don. I had a call um, with, with one of my people that it's in my in a mastermind that I'm doing and, and it's it's kind of turned into a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, which I'm absolutely loving because I do love to work one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, and I said, so how are things going, um, you know, with the lives? Have you done any lives yet? Well, not quite. Um, yeah, not yet. Okay. Well, what's going on with that? Right. And, um, sorry, I'm, not, I'm outside. I might have to move in if she continues. Um, and I said, well, where's that coming from? And she said, I don't know. And hold on, please. Hey, lucky interrupt us. Um, and I, she said, I don't know. And so I said, yes, you do. So I'm going to take my coffee. Hang on a minute. You guys, sorry. This is like real life at my house right now. So we've got a barking dog out here that likes to tell people where he lives. Look. There he is. There's two of them. Those of you with animals understand, I'm sure. It's a constant interruption working from home. But anyway, so I said to her, let's dig into it. Where, where is this thought coming from of fear? Where is this feeling coming from of fear? And it was like, well, I'm afraid that if I do this live video that it's not going to be um, you know, what I want it to be or what I expect it to be or what she expects of herself, right? Okay, let's go deeper. Are y'all done out there? So I can stay out. It's so beautiful. I hate to go inside. And she said, um, okay. So I said, when is the first time that you are, or, no, I said, are you a perfectionist? This is the question I asked her. And she said, yes. And I said, okay, who taught you that you had to be perfect? So this is just a series of questions that I'm asking her so that we can explore where is fear coming from? And it's all about fear of going live, right? Now think about it like this, you guys, maybe you have a fear of speaking in front of people. Maybe you have a fear of talking to strangers. Maybe you have a fear of success. Maybe you have a fear of speaking up for yourself. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. In this situation, it was fear of going lives. Um, the other day when, it, when I was teaching in a group, it was um, fear of showing up and being vulnerable, right? So everybody has something different. The goal for us is this, you guys. You know, everybody says, overcome your fears. You can do it. And we're like, but how? The question is, how do we do that? How do I get underneath this and find, it at, and find out how to overcome it? You find out where it came from, okay? So in order to overcome the fear that everybody says you should overcome, you have to find out the origin of the fear and, and face it and deal with it and look at it and, and see where it came from so that you can identify that it is no longer who you are today. Okay. So let me unpack this a little bit more for you. Sorry for all the bar dog barking, you guys. I know it's interruptive, but, um, stay, stay with me here. So, um, I'm going to go back to the fear of going live. Right. And I said, okay, so you're afraid that it's not going to be perfect. That's right. Okay. So what if it isn't perfect? Then what? Well, then I'll be judged, right? Good morning. Good morning, Lori. Hi. Um, then I'll be judged. Okay. Judged by who? Well, people who are watching it, right? Okay, great. So, you're, let me just clarify, you're fearful that if you go live, I'm going inside, this isn't working out, too much activity out here. So if you go live, that you put something out there to the world that isn't exactly what you want it to be and isn't perfect, right? So who taught you that? Well, I guess I would have to say that it came from maybe 
my dad, okay? So let's unpack that even further, right? So she started to unpack this and it became a really interesting conversation that which I turned her around and said, he is no longer judging what you do. He is no longer telling you um, that you're not good enough or, or, or acting as if you're not good enough. You are a grown woman, right? You're a grown up woman that um, has a job, has a career, has a husband, has all of these things. He is no longer there to judge you. So why are you still letting him into your reality and, and um, making him affect your business today? So what that looks like for me as an experience, just to share, and I want you guys to let me know if you relate to any of this, because this is absolutely the truth. Fear comes from something that we don't even know happened to us when we were younger or something that somebody said to us or something that, that we, we were um, brought to believe about ourselves. And we're bringing that into our reality today. Those are the things that are coming into your business with you. So if you say, well, I'm afraid to go live because I'm afraid somebody's going to ask me a question I don't know the answer to, Go back further. All right. What if they do ask you a question that you don't know the answer to? Well, then I'm afraid I'm going to look stupid. Okay. So what if you do look stupid in your mind? That is because not anybody else's, right? Well, then I'll feel I'll feel vulnerable and fearful, and I won't want to go on um, live again. Okay. And then what? Well, then my business won't grow. And then what? Well, then I'll be I'll feel like a failure. Okay. So when we get to that point, we have to say, who made you feel? as if you weren't good enough? Who made you feel as if you weren't worthy to speak up in the world? Why do you have a fear of being vulnerable? Always, always take it back further in your life and figure out where the origin of that was. And it will literally, a little bit at a time, lose its power over you. Is this making any sense, you guys? I, I know I'm running on here, but, but my point is this, is that we have to remember, and this is the wrapping it all up with a bow, you guys. We have to remember that who we are today, who we are in our lives today as grown-ups that are entrepreneurs and are starting to build our businesses and all of that is not who we were as children trying to get our needs met. That's as plain and simple as it gets. So when we're fearful or when we're, we're afraid of being vulnerable or we're not showing up in our business like we know that we should, we have to look back to where it came from so that it can lose its power over us. So I encourage you, if there is something that you're fearful or afraid of, if you feel like you don't have any self-worth, if you believe that you're not good enough unless you're perfect, any of those limiting beliefs, if those things are happening to you, then I encourage you to look back in your life a little bit at a time. Sometimes it's five years at a time. Sometimes it's a decade at a time. But unpack it a little bit at a time. Who taught me this? Who, who did I allow to make me feel this way? And this is why I always say in my, in my trainings and all of that is that when we allow someone to come in and steal our power from us, right? That bleed in our personal life, that bleeds into our business. No matter what you say, it does. It absolutely does. You cannot say, oh, I've dealt with all of my issues personally and, and life is great and then still have something going on with your business. Because if you deal with the issues in your life and you're working on them, your business can only grow and follow and prosper. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for the validation that everything I ramble on makes sense here. Um, because the truth is this is, you know, I'm not going to be that person that shows up for you guys and talks about conventional things with coaching. You can go out and find anything you want on that. You can go out to Facebook and your ads and you can go out to Google and you can look up how to market, how to funnel, all of that stuff. I want to teach you the foundations of what it really means to be successful, not only in your business, but in your life. Because if we can get really successful as a person and successful as a person means growing, navigating this crazy world we're in, showing up, being vulnerable, being authentic, um, being good enough, not being perfect, owning our worth, um, showing up for ourselves first before others. If we can do all of those things and be successful in our lives as a person, holy crap, you don't know what's coming down the pipe for your business because it's nothing but abundance and success. 100%. In all of the years that I've been working with coaches and mentoring and teaching and um, working with people, I have never seen anyone that has kept a chaotic personal life and not worked on themselves have a successful, sustainable, long-term business. Sustainable, long-term, meaning, yeah, you can have some success here and there. You can have some, um, you know, some good months with clients. You can have a good launch with a program. But if you don't face whatever's happening in your personal life and you don't continually work on yourselves to become comfortable with who you are, to show up as who you are, those uh, successes in your business will be very short term. Yeah, exactly. So I see Lori's commenting and I can't read a darn thing. What you're talking about is what we need both for ourselves and our clients. They are dealing with some of this stuff too. They're dealing with it 
period. You're 100% right. And so let's lean into that a little bit and see what that looks like with our clients. So let's say we've got a client, and I've had multiple, multiple clients like this in the, over the years. Let's say we have a client that um, you know comes to you, and I'll just use, um, I'm gonna change the name, I'll call her Martha. It's not even close to her name, but I'll call her Martha. Um, you know, she said, I just want to do, you know, a food and lifestyle review with you, a one-time session and see what I'm missing here because I'm still not feeling great, right? I'm like, okay, fantastic. So fill out the short intake form. Let's get it scheduled and we'll do a one-time hour and a half session and I'll see what I can pull out, right? And I knew this person and, um, you know, I knew she was living a healthy life for the most part. I was looking at, you know, um, her as who I knew as a friend. And when I got her intake form, I'm like, holy crap, I don't even know what I can do for this person. I mean, seriously, paleo eater, goes to bed at 8.30 at night, gets up with a circadian pattern. I mean, all of this stuff. And then I got to the exercise part. And then I saw that she was doing multiple, multiple triathlons and Ironmans and running and marathons and all of that to the point where I was like, how does a human being even do these types of things over and over again? Like that's some crazy, crazy um, resilience to, and, and, um, and strength, right? And so anyway, what I realized as we unpacked her situation was that she was doing those things so that she wouldn't gain weight, so that she wouldn't be seen as someone that was imperfect to the mother who raised her, right? So why wasn't she feeling well? Because the stress her body was under was causing her, number one, she was so thin, you could practically see, I mean, she was like sideways, she disappeared. Um, but she was so thin that she wasn't absorbing all the nutrients of the great food she was eating. She was, she was going to bed at the right time, but she wasn't sleeping properly because her food was not, she wasn't absorbing her food, period. She wasn't getting what she needed. Her body was in a constant state of stress. And it was just a matter of time before the whole thing, you know, turned into a shit show. So we unpacked that side of her life and we really spent almost an hour just discussing what is this need of yours to please a woman who you don't even live with anymore, who is no longer in your life, right? So when we went after that, not only did she stop training as much, she got less injuries, she started sleeping better, she's put on a little bit of weight, my God, she looks so much better. But it really wasn't going after anything on that food review or what she was doing with those things in her life. It was going after why she felt she had to do those things to show up in the world. Does that make sense? So anyway, when we're working with our clients, you guys, it's never just about food and movement. It's never just about uh, hormones. It's about everything that goes around those things that causes those problems. That's investigative health coaching. So you can do all the dang labs in the world. You can do the hair mineral analysis. You can do the gut test. You can do the Dutch test. You can do uh, you know, kinesiology. You can do all that stuff. You can eat all right. Your clients can be doing everything perfectly. But if we don't dig into what's causing them to, to um, believe that they're not good enough or worthy or that they're living with fear and low confidence or they're sabotaging themselves, you're really going to have short-term um, short rewards there. And what we're looking for, and especially what I teach at the Institute, is to find the cause of what's, what's making somebody feel less than that's creating this world around them. And, and helping them and making them make decisions that aren't healthy for them, mind, body, and soul. And we're not exempt. We should be working on ourselves as well. All right. That was a long rant, wasn't it? That was a long one. Good morning. Yes, my head continues to get in my way and imposter syndrome sets in. I got that phone right up on my face because I couldn't see it. Yeah. You know what? You're not an imposter because let me tell you something. Um, and I don't, it says MCM portraits photography. So it's coming in as a business, but, um, I'd like to call you by your name, but I'll call you by that instead. Um, let me tell you something. You are not an imposter. Not one person listening to this live is imposter when it comes to health and wellness, because if everybody gets honest for a change, um, and we show up exactly as we are, we're going to recognize that we all have shit happening in our life. So what you see in real life out there in social media um, you know, what you're looking at, all these people that have it all together and everybody that acts like, if you just do this, you'll have this. It's all BS. It's all BS. Everybody has problems. Everybody has issues. Everybody should be working on something in their life. And those who aren't are the ones with the bigger problems. So you are not an imposter. You are never an imposter. If you show up as who you are, and you authentically want to share, hi, Marie. Oh, good. I love that you shared your name. Hi, Marie. Um, if you show up authentically as who you are, and you don't try to be anyone that you're not, and you don't try to force ideas on people just because it's the trendy thing to do, and you don't try to act like somebody who's got it all together, then we're going to start seeing people actually show up in real life here, you guys. 
And that's what we need to be doing to set examples for our clients is to be real about who we are and to show up to let people know, listen, we're here to help you more authentically come into your own, make decisions based on your instincts, your intuition, and who you truly are in this world, right? And the only way that we can do that is to do that for ourselves. So um, I'm seeing plenty of coaches out there having huge success and making lots of money, but I also know behind the scenes their lives are falling apart. So never, ever feel like an imposter. Never, ever feel like you are failing because you don't look like you have it all together. Um, be who you are, you guys. It's my favorite Oscar Wilde quote. I say it all the time. Be who you are. Everyone else is taken. And there's a reason that that quote is so powerful. So... Um, anyway, I hope this rant was help, was helpful for you. I just wanted to come in and just tell you guys, you know, um, there's fear in all of us and there's fear in all of us building businesses. There's fear in all of us showing up live. There's fear of all of us not looking the way we should on social media. That's why all the duck face pictures and all the pictures of people in their bikinis and all the pictures of people in their perfect world showing up. But what's really going on behind the scenes? They've got barking dogs outside. They're having divorces. They've got kids that are having problems. Maybe they're struggling with weight issues and all of that. So, you know, let's try to stop all of that comparison stuff and just start getting real with each other. Can we do that? That'd be fantastic. All right. Thanks for popping on and listening. I appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of the week, you guys. It's Wednesday. Woo, two days to the weekend. And of course, if you're interested in working with me on anything in your life, personal or business, send me an email to carmenhunterhealth at gmail.com. And if you're not yet certified or your certification did not meet what you need to have a successful business, check us out at the Institute for Functional Health Coaching and book a call with us. We love to talk to you guys and find out if we're a fit for you and if you're a fit for us. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. And oh, I didn't say hi. Who is that? I didn't say hi to. Hold on. Shanti or Shanti? Oh, beautiful. I love, love, love these names, you guys. You guys have pretty names. All right. Talk to you later.